Hi everyone, welcome to Carpet Labs. Um, in this episode today we're going to um, look at this idea of density as a conversion factor. Um, in the previous video we've talked about this idea of the factor label method, that is using fractions that we call conversion factors to help us in making calculations in chemistry. Okay, so we used two kind of more generic examples. We looked at converting kilograms to grams and then also um, something not science related but looking at converting Australian dollars to US dollars. And we saw the power of these, these fractions um, to be able to make these calculations. Now we're going to apply them to our context in being able to calculate density. Okay, so we're going to go through two kind of specific um, examples for you. Um, just so you can you kind of see how this process works. Okay. Okay, so we're going to look at gold as an example. So we're told that gold has a density of 19.3 grams per cubic centimetre. Okay, and then in this say, we're saying, okay, what is the mass of a 15 cubic centimetre sample? Okay, so using the information that I'm given here, I can set up two conversion factors, just like we've done before. I can say for every 19.3 grams of gold, I have one cubic centimetre. Or for every one cubic centimetre of gold I have, I have 19.3 grams. Okay, so remember it so said this idea that density is this relationship between, of an object's mass to its volume. Okay, so this is the general sort of relationship that we're working with here. Okay, but so we want to use our factor label method to make calculations. Okay, involving one of these two factors, version A or version B. Okay, so remember that the, the general principle is the units that I want over the units that I have. Okay, so the units that I want is I want um, a mass. So I want units of grams to be on the top. So I'm going to pick version A in this case and not version B. Okay, so I'm told that I have a 15 cubic centimetre sample of gold and I'm going to multiply that number by the conversion factor that I've chosen. 19.3 grams for every one cubic centimetre. Remember that the reason that I chose it at all was that these units of cubic centimetres cancel out and we end up with units of grams. So in my calculator I type 15 times 19.3 and so then I get a value of 289.5 grams. Okay, And in this case I'm going to round it to three significant figures so I'm going to say, uh, actually I'm going to go with two significant figures, 290 grams. Okay, so I've used, set up a conversion factor, I've picked the one that has the units that I, I want over the units that I have, and I've multiplied that by the number that I've been given. Okay, let's go through another example, just quickly. Okay, so I'm told that aluminium has a density of 2.70 grams per cubic centimetre, which is pretty similar to the value that you would have worked out by the slope of the line um, uh, on the, in the, the prac that we've done previously. Okay, so I want to know the volume of a 10 gram sample. Okay, so just as before, I can set up two conversion factors. For every 2.70 grams of aluminium, I have one cubic centimetre. Or for every one cubic centimetre, I have 2.70 grams. A or B. Okay, so I want units that I want over units that I have. Okay, so I, units that I want, in this case, are going to be cubic centimetres. The units that I have are grams. So in this case, version A has grams over cubic centimetres. That's not going to help me. But version B will help me in this situation. Okay, so I've got the, the number that I've given, I've got a 10 gram sample, and I multiply by my conversion factor B, writing in those units, 2.70 grams. So you can see that my grams cancel and I'm left with cubic centimetres. Okay, so in my calculator I do 2 times 1 divided by or over 2.70. Okay, and then I end up with 3.70 cubic centimetres to three significant figures. Okay, so you can see in both of these examples I've used the process of setting up a conversion factor um, 
setting up two versions that then I make a choice about which one that I'm going to need to go as the units that I that has the units that I want over the units that I have. I multiply that by the number that I'm given, and then I put the numbers in the calculator appropriately, and I get the answer that I'm after in the units that I want. Okay, so you can see that even though this is a more chemistry um, context, you know, we're doing a calculation based on density, which is where we're at at the moment. You can see we're using this process, we're setting up conversion factors, um, and you know, and it works out really well for us. Now, the beauty for this of this approach for me is that you don't need to memorize density triangles or density formula or be an algebra whiz to you know to know how to kind of rearrange formulas and all this sort of thing that you can set up a conversion factor set up two versions and make an intelligent choice about this one's got the units i want over the units that i have okay and so you're using rational thinking process rather than brute memorization or um you know or, or kind of algebra wizardry you're not um you and then you just using that to then work out what to put in your calculator. It's really simple. I've had lots of students who found it really successful. It means that they can perform complex calculations with a lot more accuracy and a lot um, fewer silly mistakes. So I hope that that helps to clear it up. Now you can keep going with some more practice examples. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.